Hey guys, okay, we are gonna start uh, the second part of the tutorial already in progress. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry, I got a little confused by my own code. It happens sometimes. Um, okay, so uh, I was speaking about these two variables, and they are not evident from right here. It's gonna be better to explain to you as I go through the code for those two variables. But just so you know, it's a private boolean float fade time, which starts out as true, and then a private float next, which uh, is actually very similar to the previous next float that we had done with the time variable. So what we come down here is on the update, uh, first thing it does, it checks to see if clear is true. And clear starts out false. Clear is also public, which um, uh, allows us to access, this is how we're going to actually turn on this code. So th we're going to access this fr back from our orbiting um, script and change clear to true. And so once clear is true, we go inside here. And first we check to see if fade time is true. And fade time starts out as true. So the very first time this runs, it is going to put the current time plus a, a factor of uh, 0 0.03 into the, our next float. And then it's going to uh, turn uh, fade time to false. So, and then it's going to keep running. It's going to check to see if the current time is greater than next time. And it'll keep updating until that happens. And when that happens, we are going to access the color uh, one. These two color variables are also going to be supplied via our orbiting script. And these are the two color variables of the line. It's going to come in here and subtract a small amount of value from the alpha of both these colors which makes them slightly clearer and then the game object dot component dot line render set colors so this is gonna find the line renderer that's attached to the empty object and it's gonna set the colors as the new colors that are slightly clearer and once that happens it, it's gonna create the change the fade time back to true so the very next time that this runs we are gonna get a a new uh, time increment that allows it to delay the 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 clear um, the colors becoming clearer and wait and then um, the one last piece of code that is gonna happen is there's gonna be an if statement right here that uh, if the, co the alpha of this first color becomes less or equal to zero, we just go ahead and destroy the object. So we've got that saved, right? And uh, I'm gonna remove that breakpoint, sorry. F9 creates breakpoints in um, mono development and F9 is my uh, recorder value, so we've got fade we are gonna attach it to our game object game objects clear um, we're gonna rename this as just we'll just call this line object and we're now gonna create a prefab prefab and we're gonna call this um, we can call this empty node empty node and we're gonna put our line object okay so our scripts attached there we can now get rid of this line we'll delete it and the last thing we need to go do is go back to our orbiting script and come down here to when it destroys the object and in between these two what we want to do is add three more lines of code Come here. Boom. Boom. So what this does is it goes to the path orb, which was where we're storing the the instantiated uh, empty object, and passes the colors of the current line to the C1 and C2 of the fade um, script 
So that's path orb dot get component uh, brackets fade, and then C1 equals C1, and then same thing for C2. And it's also going to do path orb dot get component and then brackets and dot clear equals true. So that basically just activates the script by creating clear as true. This is fade. And if we save this, we can now take a look at here. We take our orbiting object. So now we need to drag our empty nod into empty no destruct. And that should work. So if we hit play, we can find, there we go. It now has a path drawing behind it. And so if we copy this, control copy, control paste. Control copy, control paste. Control copy, control paste. Control copy, control paste. Okay, and so that's a bunch of different moons. Now, if we run it, we can see a bunch of moons orbiting, drawing paths around each other. Kind of cool when they get near each other. You can see the effects on each other's paths. Uh, want to see if one of these will collide oh we have a exception hang on okay so oh here we go Moron, sorry. We need to change this to fade to. Um, in your script, you can just keep the fade script as fade in and of itself, and that will work fine. But um, I renamed mine as fade to, and that caused a null exception when it ran the orbiting script. So let's save this, come back out. I'm going to pause that. And let's get one of these closer together so we don't have to wait too long for the the orbits to collide. Okay guys, back. So restarted Unity, and if we run it now, we can take a look. And as these guys go together and explode, the lines fade out. And if we actually we can actually we play this when it's not maximizing on play and go back to the scene we can watch it from this view and our, actually our hierarchy we can see all these empty node clones actually slowly fade out and be destroyed which is nice it cleans up our uh, our our game and keeps us from actually eating up too much memory this is actually like i was worried when i first used this that it was going to be extremely memory intensive but i've used a large number of uh, moons together and it actually runs pretty well not only on my computer but on a few older computers that I tried it on but um, that's pretty much it I appreciate you guys watching have a nice day